We're going to start our show here in just a minute, but I wanted to take the opportunity to tell you all a few things about Shakespeare Camp this year. Welcome to 2021 Shakespeare Camp. Uh, we've, had, we've had an awesome week. Your children have worked really, really hard, and I think they're going to put on a really good show for you. Um, we're, we're all trying to remember and not get all twisted up and remember that primarily what we're here for is the fun of it. It's camp, so it's fun, right? Um, I, there are lots of moving parts here, though, so I need to take this opportunity to introduce you to a few people. Ashley, sit there. Where is she? There she is.
and dignity and bad grown up where we lay off seat. Beat them down! Down! 
quarrel you will broach. Speak, Ken. Were you by when it began? Hero servants of your adversary, and yours. Close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them. In that instant came the fiery tybalt, his sword prepared. And while we were interchanging thrusts and blows, came more and more, who fought on part and part, till the princess came, who parted either part. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad I am he was not at this spring. Madam, an hour before the worship sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad. In so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I approached, but he was wary of me, and stole into the covert of the woods. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew. But all so soon as the all-cheering sun should in the farthest east begin to draw shady curtains from the roar's bed, away from light steals home my heavy sun, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humor be, unless good counsel may the cause with him. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know of it, nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him, please? Both by myself and many other friends. If we could but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes. So please you step aside. I'll know his grievance, or be much to not. I would thou wert so happy by thy stay to hear true shrift. Come, madame, let's away. Good morrow, cuz. Is this day so young? But you struck not. I me sad I will seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love. Out. Of love? Out of her favor, where I am in love. Alas, that love, so gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough and firm. Oh, me, what frame is here? Yet, tell me not, for I have heard it all. There's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, this love feel I, that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? No, cuz. I'd rather weep. Good heart, at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. The love thou hast shown me has added more griefs to too many of mine own. Therefore, farewell, cousin. Soft, I will go look. But if you leave me here, you do me wrong. I have lost. Myself, I am not here. This, this is not Romeo. He's, he's some other where. Tell me in sadness, who is that you love? What, shall I groan and tell thee? Groan? Why, no, but sadly, tell me who. Oh, shall not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, shall not stay the siege of loving terms, nor by the encounter of the sailing eyes. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine another beauties. He that is struck in blind cannot, cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight once lost. Farewell, thou canst not teach me how to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. But he was found, well as I in penalty of life, it is not hard as fate in men so old as we keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both, then? Pity tis you have gone so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? Ah, uh, say over what I have said before. Oh. My child is in a stranger in this world. If he hath not yet seen the change of fourteen years, let the two more summers with her in their pride ere they take her right to be a bride. This night I hope with all the custom feast, for to I have invited many a guest of such as I love. And you among the score, one more, most welcome, makes my number more. Go with me. Sarah, go. Barbarona, try to bow. Find those persons out whose names are written. To them say, my 
house and pleasure and their wealth and stay. Be gone. Find them out whose names are here writ. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, and the tailor with his last, the painter with his next, and the fisher with his pencil. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are here writ, but can never find what names the writing person hath here writ. I must to the learned in good time. Cut, man! One fire burns out, another's burning! Take thou some new infection to the eye, and the red poison of the old will die. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that. Good end, good fellow. God be good end. I pray, sir, can you read? I, I'm unfortunate in my misery. Perhaps you have learned it without book. But, I pray, sir, can you read it for the sea? I, if I know the letters and the language. You say honestly, rest you here. Stay, sir. I can read. Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, Mercutio and his brother, my uncle Capulet and his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline, Signor Valentino and his cousin Tilt, Lucio, and a lively Helena. A fair assembly. Whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper, to our house. The, whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great, rich Capulet. And if you be not to the house of the Montagues, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. At this same ancient feast of Capulet, sups the fair Rosamond. Compare her face to some that I shall show. I'll make thee think thy swan a crow. Transparent <laughs> heretics, be burnt for liars. What fairer than my love? The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world began. You saw her fair, no one else being by. But in that crystal scale, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid. I'll go along. No such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in the splendor of my mind. And see how one another lends content. 
and what obscured his fair body lies, fine written in the margin of his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. But that book in many's eyes does share the glory that in gold clasps locks in the golden story. So shall you have all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. Speak briefly. Can you like the Paris love? I'll look to like if Loki like me move. But to no more deep will I dart my eye than your consent to give strength to make it fly. Madam, the guests are come, supper served up. You have called, my young lady asked for, the nurse cursed in the pantry, and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. <laughs> I am in love with Juliet. Romeo. Love, I tell you. Yes. What? Shall this speech be spoke for our excuse? Let them measure by us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. Give me a torch. I am not for this handling, being the heavy. I'll bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dead! Uh, not I. Believe me, you have dancing shoes with nimble soles, but I have a soul of lead. You are a lover, just borrow Cupid's wings and so with them a bubble crop and bow. I am too sore and pierced with these shaft. Give me a case to put my visage in. A visor, for a visor. What care I with curious eyes with poor deformities? Here are the beautiful brows shall blush for me. Come, now can enter. And no sooner in, but let every man to take him to his lips. A torch for me, I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Uh huh, we burn daylight! Ho! Nay, tis not so. I mean, sir, in play we burn lights in vain, like lamps. By death. And we mean well in going to this mass, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. So did I. Well, then, what was yours? That dreamers often but. I mean, then <laughs> sleep while they can dream things true. Oh, then, I see. Queen Mab hath been with you. She's the fairy's Wife, and she comes in shape no larger than an agate stone. And in this state she gallops thy through right through lover's brains and makes them dream of love. Peace. Mercutio, peace. Thou talkest of nothing. True. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin a substance as a this wind we speak of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind, my mind misgives some hidden consequence, yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful day with this night's revels. But he that hath steerage of my course direct my sails. Strike, drum. Anthony, pardon! Hi, boy. Ready? 
You are what's going call for, asked for and sought for in the great change. You cannot be here and there too. But surely, boys, as you brisk a while, the longer you never take all. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. I have seen the day that I have been advised. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. But you are most welcome, gentlemen. Musicians, play a all a all. Foot up, girls. One, two, three, four. Yon gentleman, 
the son and heir of old Tiberio. But see that now he's going out of the door. Mary, that, I think, the young Patricio. What's he that follows there? That would not dance. I know not. He goes, ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo, and of Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate? <laughs> too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love and enemy, I was love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learned even now of what I danced with all. Juliet! Anon, anon! Come, let's away. The strangers all are gone. Now, old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young Augustus engaged to be his heir. There, with love grown for him to die, his tender Juliet's match is now not fair. But to his foe, suppose he must complain. And she steals love's sweet bait from fear of hooks. But passion lends them power. Time means to meet tempering extremities with extreme sweet. Because it is an enemy to thee. 
My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance. Oh, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? No, oh, neither fair saint, and neither thou dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kids can find thee here. With love's like wings did I work perch these walls, <laughs> for stony limits cannot hold love out. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. Oh, I would not for the world they saw me here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their sight, and but thou love me, let them find me here, for my life were better ended by your hate. Than death wrote wanting of their, wanting of your love. By whose direction found thou out this place? By love who first did prompt me to inquire. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush to paint my cheeks of that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. And dost thou love me? Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, and I'll believe thee. This spot of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night, good night. A sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that from thy breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet, I was where to give again. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Madam! I hear some noise within. And dear love adieu. Anon, good nurse! Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little, I will come again. Blessed, blessed night, I am afeard, being a night, that all of this is but a dream, being too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee. Where and to what time thou wilt perform the right? And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam! I come and on. But if thou meanest not well, I do beseech thee. Madam! By and by I come! To cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive, my soul. Good night, good night. Parting is such a sweet sorrow that I should say good night to it be morrow. Hence, I will thither to my ghostly father's cell, his help to crave and my dear hap to tell.
poison as residents. Add to medicine. Four, being smelt. With that part, cheers each part. Being tasted. Stays all the senses with the heart. Two such opposing kings in camp and still. In man, as well as those, grace and goodwill. Where the worser is predominant, full soon, canker death, eats up this plant. Good morning, Father. Benedicity. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? John's tongue, it argues a distempered head, so soon to bid good morrow to life head. Or, if I hit it right, our Romeo hath not been in his bed tonight. Oh, I have been feasting with mine enemies, when on a sudden one hath wounded me, that is by me wounded. Both are remedies when in thy help and holy sight lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for likewise my intercession steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and only in thy drift. Ridley confession finds the Ridley drift. Then plainly know that my heart's dear love is set upon the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on her, so hers is set on mine. And all combined, say what thou must combine with holy marriage, where and when and how we met, we wooed, and made exchange of vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray that thou wilt consent to marry us today. Holy St. Francis, <laughs> what it changes here? Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love, so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love and lies are truly in their heart, in their eyes. Lo, on thy cheek a stain doth sit of an old tear that is not washed off yet. If thou wast thyself, and these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline. And art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there is no strength in them. Oh, thou oft hast chided me for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. And bade me very love, not in a grave to lay one in, another out to have. Oh, I pray thee, chidest thee not. For she that I love now doth grace for grace, and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well thy love did breed by a goat. Could not spell. But come, young waver, come. In one respect will I thy assistance. For this abides may so happy prove to turn your household's grand for into pure love. Oh, let us hence, I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow, they stumble and run fast. <laughs> Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Not to his father, so I spoke with his man. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. Oh, a challenge on my life. Well, we all answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, Romeo will answer it. How he dares being dared. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what's Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, he is the courageous captain of compliments, the very butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist, a gentleman of the very first house, of the first and second cause. The immortal passato, the boot of reverso, the ha, the what? The pox of such anti. Lisping, affecting fantasticos, these new tutors of accents. Bias! A very good blade and a very tall man. Here comes Romeo. Here comes Romeo. Flesh, flesh, how art thou fishing? 
goodbye. Bonjour, Signor Romeo. There's a French solution to your French stuff. Why, you gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, the slip, can you not conceive? I beg your pardon, for my business was great. And in such a case as mine, amen, may strain courtesy. Guardy, good morrow, gentlemen. Guardy, good morrow. Fair gentlewoman. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you. <laughs> but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you first sought him. I'm the youngest of that name for fault of a worse. You say well. Yeah, it's the worst who well, very well to thy faith. Wise, wise. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. She will indict him to some supper. <laughs> Romeo, will you two followers will to uh, dinner thither? I will follow. Farewell, ancient lady, farewell. Lady, lady, lady. Mary, farewell. I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his robbery? A gentleman, nurse, one that loves to hear himself talk <laughs> and will speak more in a minute than he will stand in a month. And he speak anything at me, I'll take him down. And thou must stand by too and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure? I saw no man use you a pleasure. <laughs> if I had, my weapon should quickly have been out. I warrant you, I dare draw as soon as another man, if I see occasion of a good quarrel, and the long last time. Now, for God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy name! Pray, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you out. What she bade me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell you, if ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of occasion, as they say. For the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and a very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress, I do protest. Good heart and in faith, I will tell her as much. She will be a joyful woman. I will bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. And there, in Friar Lawrence's cell, she shall be shrived and married. Here, here is for thy pains. No, truly, sir, not go, a penny. Go do. I say you shall. Well, this afternoon, sir? Well, she shall be there. Oh, farewell. Commend me to thy mistress.
while. Fie, how my bones ache! What in shot have I had? I would thou hadst my bones and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray speak. Good, good nurse, speak. What haste! Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath, when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? <laughs> the excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy new good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll say the circumstance. Will let me be satisfied? Is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo! No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's. And for a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not to be talked on, they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench. Serve God. What? Have you died at home? No, no. But all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage with that? Oh, how my head is. What a head have I. It beats as it would fall in twenty pieces. Oh, oh my back. On the other side, oh, my back, my back. Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. In faith, I am sorry thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and, I warrant, a virtuous. Where's your mother? Where's my mother? Why, she's within, where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then how you hence to Friar Lord's cell? There stays a husband to make you a wife. Go, I'll to dinner. Hi you to the cell. Hi to my fortune. Honest nurse, farewell. So smile the heavens upon this holy act, after hours of sorrow, chide us not. Amen, amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one minute in her presence gives me. Do thou, to close our hands with holy words, in love devouring death, do what he dare. Oh, it is enough I might recall her mine. These violent lights of violent ends, and then that triumph die like fire and power, which as they kiss, consume. Therefore, love honored. Long love doth so. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. And here comes the lady. You can be pleased like us and confess it. Come. Come with me. For by your leaves, you shall not stay alone till the Holy Church can incorporate two in one. Full of 
world as an egg is full of meat. And yet, thou wilt tutor me for quarreling? And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man should have the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. The fee simple? Oh, simple. By my head, here comes the Capulets. Oh, by my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good day. A word with one of you. Oh, but one word with one of us. Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. And can you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. Consort? What dost thou make of us minstrels thou consort? We talk here in the public haunt of men, either withdraw into some private place and reason boldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look. And let them gaze, for I will not budge from this spot for no man's pleasure I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Well, I'll be hanged if I were your livery. Mary, go before to field. He'll be your follower. Your worship in that sense may call him man. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better time than this. Thou art a villain. Two. The reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the aberrating of rage to such greeting. Villain I am none, therefore farewell, I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. I do protest, I never injured thee, but rather love thee more than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason for my love, and so. Good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as my own, be satisfied. Oh, Paul, dishonorable, vile submission, Alistair carries it away. Tybalt, you rat catcher, will you walk? <laughs> and what wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives, which I need to make bold withal. And as you shall treat me hereafter, drag feet the rest of the eight. Now, will you pluck your sword out of its pitcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be but your ears, ears be out. I am going to. Gentle Mercutio, put thy great care up. Come, sir, your Pisado. Draw, Benvolio, be down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Hold, Tybalt, good Mercutio. I am hiding! I'm playing on both your houses! I am spent! I see God and have nothing! What art thou hurt? Ay, hey, ay, hey, scratch, scratch! Tis enough! Swear to my pain! Go and fetch a surgeon! Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much! No! Tis not so deep as a wall, nor so wide as a church door, but. Tis enough to a sir. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. Why? The devil came here between us. I was hurt under your arm. I, I not over the better. Come, help me to some husband, Molly, or I shall faint. A plague of both your houses. They have made words made of me. I have it. It's soundly too. Your houses. This, gentlemen, the prince's near alley, my very friend hath got his mortal hurt. In my behalf, my reputation stained by tumult slander. Ah, dear Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor steel. Conduct now! Tybalt! Take back the beast! 
villain that like thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy that didst consort him here shall quit him hence. This shall determine that. Tybalt, 
It did. It did. Alas, the day it did. Oh, servant heart, his with flowering face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a case? Shame come to Romeo. Molester be thy child for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow, shame in shame he sit. For tis a throne where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of the universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him! Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. That foolish dear, back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe. Would you mistake me offer up to joy? My husband lives, and Tybalt would have slain. And Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. Oh, wherefore weep I then? Song, word there was, worser than Tybalt's death. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo vanished. That vanished, that one word vanished has slain ten thousand Tybalt's. Tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there. Romeo has vanished. To speak that word as father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead! Romeo has vanished. There is no end, no limit, measure bound to that word's death. No words in that low sound. Where is my father and my mother? We wink and wailing over Tybalt's corpse. Will you go to them? I will bring you thither. Wash they his wounds with tears. Mine shall be spent when theirs are dry. Romeo's banishment. Hide to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I watch well where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. Out to him. He is hid at Lauren's cell. Oh, find him. Give this ring to my true knight. And bid him come to take his last farewell. The judgment vanished from his lips, not on his death, but on his banishment. Banishment! Be merciful, say death! For exile had more terror in his look, much more than banishment. And <coughs> do not say banishment. And what from Baroda art thou banished? Be patient, for the earth is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. <laughs> oh, deadly sin, rude unthankfulness. Thy fault our law calls death, but the kind princess, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Tis torture and not mercy, for heaven is here where Juliet lives. Thou fond man, man, hear me but speak a word. Thou wilt speak again of banishment. I shall give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity's sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet. This planet hath reverse a prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not. Speak no more. One knocks. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What is your will? Let me come in, and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Speak yourself, my lady. How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer now that I have stained the childhood of our joy with blood but little removed from her own? Where is she, and how doth she, and what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. As if that name, shot from the heavenly level of a gun, did murder her. As that name's cursed hand did murder her kinsman. Tell me, father, oh, tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lie, that I might sack the hateful mansion Hold thy desperate hand! Art thou man? Thy form cries out, thou art. By thy holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain, Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself? 
and stay thy lady that lives eating thee by doing damn hate upon thyself. Throw thee, man. Thy Juliet is alive. For whose sake thou was but lately dead, there art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt, there art thou happy too. The law that threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it into exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings lies up upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. Go, give thee to thy love as was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence and comfort her. Stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we may find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friend, make pardon of the prince, and return with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Go before nurse, and then me to thy lady, bid her hasten of all the house to bed which heavy sorrow has an apple to. Romeo is coming. Oh, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is! My lord, I'll tell my lady who will come. Do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Here, sir, a ring she made me give you, sir. Hi, you, make haste, for it grows very late. Oh, how well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence. Good night. And here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or disguised from hence, mm -hmm. sojourn to Mantua. I'll find out your man, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap unto you that chances to him. Give me thy hand. It is late. Farewell. Good night. Oh, that a joy past choice calls out on me. It were grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out for Sir so unluckily that we have not yet had the chance to move our daughter. Mind you, she loved her cousin, Tibble, dearly. So did I. Well, we were born to die. Please, time to blow, or no time to lose. Madame, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she is mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's affection. I think she shall be moved more respect by me. Nay, more, I doubt not. Well, Thursday, tell me, shall be married to this noble lord. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? We'll keep no greater tune, perhaps a friend or two, but what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Well, if you go on Thursday, be it then. Go thou, Juliet, and I'll go to bed. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. Light to my chamber. Oh, it is so very, very early. You may call it late by and by. Good night. Night's candles are burnt out, and darkened days tends to tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight. I know it, I. It is some meteor of the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torch bear and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore, stay yet. Thou needest not to be gone. Well, let me be taken. And put to death, I am content, so thou wilt have it so. Come, death, and welcome. I am content, so truly I will have it so. It is not yet day. Oh, it is, it is. Thy heads be gone away. And now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light. More dark and dark are woes. Madam, nurse, your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke. Be wary. Look about. Then window. Let day in. And let life out. 
Farewell. I will admit no opportunity to convey my greetings love to thee. Oh, see, is that we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not. And all these sorrows shall serve as sweet discourses in our time to come. Oh, father, I love. Who is it that calls? Is it my lady mother? Is she not down so late or up so early? Oh, what unaccustomed cause procures her hither? Why, how now, Juliet? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weepest not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain? And he be many miles asunder. God pardon him. I do, with all my heart. And yet no man like him doth read my heart. That is because the traitor murderer lives. Ay, madam, from the reach of these my hands. Oh, would none that I might avenge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Then weep no more. I shall send to one in Mantua, where that same banished runagate doth live, shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company. And then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. And day is my poor heart for a kinsman met. Madam, if you could find out what a man to bear a poison, I would tender it, that Romeo should, upon receipt thereof, soon sleep in quiet. Oh, how my heart abhors the hair remains and cannot come to him, to wreak the love I bore my cousin upon his body that slaughtered him. Find thou the means, and thou find such a man. But now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What are there, I beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, one who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that you expect is not, nor I look not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Mary, early next Thursday morn, the gallant young and noble gentleman, the Count of Paris, at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. No, I say Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make thee there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear, it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate rather than Paris. Oh, they are news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it into your hands. Blood still in tears. One little body of dust counterfeit, a bark, a sea, a wind. Still my eyes to heaven flow with tears. How my hast thou delivered to her our decree? I, sir, but she will none. I would that we were married to her grave. What will she none? Does she not give thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not consider herself blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have brought so worthy a gentleman to be her husband? Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful, even for hate, that is meant love. How now, how now, chop, lot, thank you, thank you, not proud, and yet not proud, mistress, me, you will thank me your thankings, and proudly no proud, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday nets, to go to Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a fertile fiddle. Fie, fie, what are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch, I tell thee not. Get thee at church on Thursday, or never after look at me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, you write her so. Peace, you mumbling fool. But in your gravity over a gospel, oh, for here we need it not. You are too hot. God's prayer makes me mad, having provided a no gentleman, no heritage, only to have a wretched puny fool say, Oh, my well, I cannot love. I am too young. I pray you, pardon me. But you will not wed. I will call. Break with you, may you will not house with me. Look to a thing that I do not use to jest. Thursday is near. 
Lay hand on the heart, I advise you. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not. Hey! Better starve, die in the streets! For by my soul I'll never acknowledge thee. Nor will anything that is mine ever do thee any good. Trust to it. I'll not be forsworn. Is there no pity sitting in the clouds that saith it to the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet, my mother cast me not away. Delay his marriage for a month, a week. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, nurse, thou shalt this be prevented. My husband is on earth, my faith in heaven. How shall that faith return again to earth? Unless that husband sent it me from heaven by leaving earth. Comfort me, counsel me. What sayest thou? Hast thou no word of joy? Some comfort, nurse. Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished and all the world to nothing, that he dare ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it best you marry with the county. But sure, my very heart, I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead, or twere as good as he were, as living here and you, no use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too, or else beshrew them both. Amen. What? <laughs> well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone having displeased my father, to learn to sell, to make confession and to be absolved. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation, oh, most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or to praise my lord with that same tongue with which she has praised him above compare to me a thousand times? Call to the friar to know his remedy, if all else fail. Myself have power to die. Say, sir, the, the time is very, very short. My father, Capulet, will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his pace. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I, I like it not. Immoderately, she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talk of love. For Venus smiles not in the house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom haste our marriage. I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, Juliet comes. How can we met, my lady <laughs> and my wife? That may be, sir, but I may be a wife. That may be. Must be, love, on Thursday next. What must be shall be. That is a certain text. Come you to make confession to this father. To answer that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. I will confess to you that I love him. So will you. I am sure you love me. If I do so, it will be of more price than so behind your back than to your face. Are you at least your holy father now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? My leader serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet. <laughs> Juliet. On Thursday early will I rouse you. Till then, watch you and keep this whole kiss. <laughs> oh, shut the door! And when thou hast done so, come break with me. Past hope, past hope, past hell. Ah, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I learn thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next be married to this county. Tell me not, fire, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no remedy, do thou call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. Hold! I do spy a kind of remedy, and if thou darest, I 
give me hope. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from all the battlements of yon tower. Or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with dead men who shroud things that, to hear them told, have made me tremble. And I will do it without fear or doubt. Hold. Go home. Be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Look that thou lie alone, but not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou of, when presently, through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor, and each part, deprived of subtle government, shall stiff, stark, and cold appear like death. And in this barred likeness of death, thou shalt continue for four and twenty hours, till thou wake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom comes in the morning to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. And as the manner of our country is, in thy best robes upon the bier, thou shalt be borne to that same ancient port where all the kindreds of the Catholics lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, Romeo, by my letters, shall know our drift, and hither shall we come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to my trap. This shall free thee from thy prison shame. If no inconstant toy, no womanish fear, abate thy valor in the act of it. Oh, give me, give me, tell me not of fear. Hold, get to God. Wrong and prosperous in this result. I'll send a fire with speed to Mantua with letters to thy lady. Oh, love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. Here are men. Sirrah, go hire me twenty cunning cooks. You have nine ale, sir, a broad trot. They can lend their fingers. How canst thou try them so? Marry, sir, tis an ill cook that cannot be his fingers. For a cook cannot lend some fingers, does not with me. So <laughs> be gone. <laughs> we shall be much unfurnished in this present time. Is my daughter gone to fire Lawrence? Aye, forsooth. You may chance to do her some good. See where she comes from, shrift, with a merry look. Oh, oh now? Why, headstrong, where have you gathered? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behest, and I've enjoined by holy lords to fall prostrate here and say, For <laughs> tonight, I beseech you, this forward I am ever ruled by you. Go sit for the county and tell them this. Ah, oh, it's not made up tomorrow morning. I met the youthful lord at Lawrence's cell, and named for what became love I might not to step forward without modesty. <laughs> well, I am glad on it. This is as it should be, Stan. I am well pleased by this. I wish to see the county. I marry, I say, go and fetch a dinner. Lawrence, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? Not till Thursday. There is time enough. Ah, go, nurse. Go with her. Go to church tomorrow. We shall be short in our provision. Tis now near night. Ah, it's much, much. I will snow it up. And I warrant you wipe all things shall be well. You go to Juliet and help prepare her. I'll not to bed tonight. Let me alone. Just this once, I'll be the housewife. But, hold me all forth. I want to walk myself to County Paris and prepare him up this morning. My heart is under its light since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Yeah. 
and rest for thou hast need. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. Come, vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No, no. This shall forbid it. Lie down there. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? Oh, there's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault? Oh, look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Tibble, seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tibble, stay. Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. Horrible day! 
Ho, for shame! Confusions, cure lives not in these. Confusions? <laughs> Heaven and herself had part in this thing. Now Heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. For your part, you could not keep from death, but Heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you saw was her emotion. For twas your heaven she should be advanced. And weeping now, seeing she is advanced, high above the clouds, as high as heaven itself. Go, get you in. And madam, go with him. And go, Sir Paris. Everyone prepare to follow this fair course unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Cross no more thy high will. I, may we put up our pipes and be gone. Ah, oh, honest good fellows. Ah, oh, put up, put up. For, well, you know, this is a pitiful case. I, by my troth, the case may be amended. Musicians. Oh, musicians. Heart's ease. Heart's ease. Oh, and you will have me live. Play heart's ease. Why heart's ease? Oh, musicians. Because my heart itself plays. My heart is full of woe. Tis no time to play now. You will not then? No! Then I will lay the serving creature's dagger on your paint. I'll ray you! I'll fire you! Do you know me? Your reds and fox! You know this. Then have at you with my wit. I will drive at you with an iron wit. And put up my iron dagger. Answer me like men. <laughs> Pestilent knave is the same. Come, will it here? Tarry for the mourners and stay dinner. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring letters to me from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fair is my Juliet? Oh, this I ask again. For naught can be ill if she be well. Her body sleeps and compels my women, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her lay low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Pardon me for bringing these ill news. You did leave from my office, sir. Even so, then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lord, you give me ink and paper and higher post horses. I will hence tonight. I beseech you, sir, have patience. You look so pale and wild, and you report some misadventure. Ha! Then thou art deceived. Go do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. Oh, it matters not. Get thee gone and hire those horses. I'll be with you straight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with you tonight. Let's see for me and see. Oh, mischief, thou art quick to enter into the thoughts of a desperate man. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts he lives, which late I did note. As I remember, this should be the shop. Being holiday, the beggar's shop is shut. What ho, apothecary! Who calls so loud? Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold, here is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison, such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself throughout all the veins that the, lead, that the life weary taker may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, but men to his law is dense to any heathen utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness, and fearest thou to die? Famine, 
is in thy cheeks. Need and oppression started in my eyes. The world is not thy friend, nor its laws. For the world affords no law to make thee rich. Therefore, be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consent. I will pay thy poverty and not thy will. <laughs> Put this in any little thing you will. Drink it off. If you had the strength of twenty men, it would attach you straight. True as I go. Worse poison to men's souls, doing more murders in this loathsome world than these poor compounds which thou mayest not sell. I have sold thee poison, thou hast sold me none. Therefore, farewell. Get thee gone and buy food, get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial, and not poison. Go with me. Juliet's way, for there I must use thee. Brother, brother, oh! I say to be the voice of Friar John. I saw you of Romeo. Well, if he's finding wits, give me his letter. Going to find a fair cut, brother, out. One of our order to associate me here in the city, visiting the sit, and finding him the searches of his hound. Suspected that we both were in house for the infectious pestilence that reigned, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth. So my speech to Mantua, there I stayed. Who bear my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again, nor did a messenger to bring it me. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune. Why, my brother, this letter was not nice, but full of charge, of dear import, and then neglecting it may do much damage. Go hence, Friar John. Get me a crow and bring it straight unto my son. Brother, I'll go and bring it to you. I must to the monuments alone. In three hours we fell Juliet to wake. She will be too me much that Romeo had no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua, and I will keep her at my cell till Romeo come. I will pour a living course and close their dead man's tomb.
And do not, do not interrupt me in my course. Why I enter this womb of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take hence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring which I must use in dear business. Therefore, hence, be gone. But if thou, jealous, dost return to pride in what I further shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint and strew thy limbs around this hungry churchyard. The time and my intent are savage wild, more fierce and more inexorable than empty lions or the roaring sea. I will be gone, sir, not trouble you. In doing so, thou shalt show me friendship. Take thou this. Live and be prosperous, and farewell, good man. For all this say, I'll hide me here about it. His looks I fear. His intents I doubt. O oh, thou detestable maw! Thou womb of death! Gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth! Thus I enforce thy rotten jaws to open! And in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. This is that banished haughty Montague! That murdered my love's cousin, which with grief it is supposed the fair creature died, and here has come to do some villainous shame to their dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. Indeed I must. And therefore came my heads. Good, gentle you. Tempt not a desperate man. Therefore gone, leave. Think upon these slaughtered, let them affright thee. Oh, I beseech you. Put not another sin upon my head by urging me to rage. Oh, be gone. By heavens, I love thee better than myself. For I come hither armed against myself. Oh, be gone. I do defy thy conjurations and apprehend thee for a felon here. Oh. Thou provoke me. Have at me, boy. Oh, Lord, they fight. I will have a lot. Oh, oh, her beauty doth make this presence a feasting 
presence full of light. Death, lie thou there by a dead man injured. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night to part again. Oh, here, here will I remain. Oh, here's to my love! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Oh, true pumpkin! Thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss I die. Saint Francis, be my speed. How oft tonight have my old feet stumbled at these graves? Who's there? Uh, a friend, a friend. And one who knows you well. Bliss be upon you. Good, my friend. What torch is yon? As I discern it, burneth in the king's monument. Doth so, holy sir. And there it is my master, one whom you love. Who is it? Romeo. Come with me to the vault. I, I, dare, I dare not, holy sir. My master knows not, but that I have gone hence, and did fearfully threaten me to death if I could stay to look upon his intents. Stay then. I'll go alone. Fear comes upon me. Much I fear some ill and lucky thing. As I slept under the yew tree here, I jerked my master in another thought, and my master slew him. Romeo. What? Mean this blood that stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre? What mean these masterless and gory swords that lie discolored by this place of peace? Go, 
tell the princess, run to the Capulets, rise the Montagues, wherever you find, go. Seek the ground where all these woes do lie, but the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without the circumstance describe. Did violence on herself. 
all this I know. And if aught in this is carried by my fault, I sacrifice my life some time before its hour done to the rigor of severest law. Still have no me for a holy man. Where is Romeo's man? What can he say in this? I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Etua to this same place, this same monument. This this letter he early bid me give his father, and did threaten me with death, going in vault. I, I departed not and left it there. Give me the letter. I will find it. Where is the county's page that called to watch? Sira, what made your master in this place? He came with flowers to strew his lady's grave and bid me stand aloof, and so I did. Don comes one with light of the tomb, and I and my master drew on him. And then I ran away to call the watch. Let it off make good the brightest words, the course of love, the tidings of her death. And here he writes that he did buy a poison of a poor apothecary. And therewithal came to this vault to die and lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague. See what a scourge is laid upon your hate that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, too, for winking at your discords, have lost a grace of kinsmen. All are punished. Brother Montague, give me that hand, for this is my daughter's choice. You no more kill any man. But I can give thee more. For I will raise her statue in pure gold, that while Verona by that name is known, there shall no such figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich as shall Romeo's by his lady's lie, poor sacrifices of our infinity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings the sun for sorrow will not show its head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.